Hey everybody, how's it going? So, these are all the Blu-rays and 4Ks I watched recently. I thought I would do this because I haven't really done a Blu-ray video in a while. Uh, I haven't really... I've picked a few more things up, but not enough to do like a big crazy haul video or anything like that. So I just figured I would talk about what I watched recently. And I kind of... I tried to order these in terms of how I felt about like the transfer quality and everything. Just for fun. So anyways, the first thing I watched recently was Licorice Pizza by Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, I, I like this movie. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite of his movies, but I, I thought it was pretty cool and, you know, had his trademark style and everything. Uh, no 4K of this, which is really unfortunate, but this Blu-ray looks fantastic. Uh, this is one of those Blu-rays that looks pretty close to 4K, is really good. The next one is also a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, Inherent Vice. And this isn't the one that came before that. I think Phantom Thread is in between there, which I've never seen. Um, this one's also not on 4K, unfortunately. I love this movie. I know this one wasn't po super popular of his, uh, but I love the Thomas Pynchon novel, and I just thought this was great. Uh, this is probably the best-looking Blu-ray I own. It pretty much looks like a 4K. I mean, really, at a lot of points, it, the picture is so ridiculously clear. And part of that is probably my TV and my player doing upscaling. Um, but regardless, it, it just looks fantastic. Now getting into the 4Ks. Um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the 1978 version. This is from Kino Lorber. This is a pretty good transfer. Um, it has a pretty good soundtrack as well. I just find that certain times in this transfer, it's, the quality dips a little bit at times. Um, there are some shots in this that are beautiful, like have really good detail and everything, and the colors are great. I just find that there are more, that not more scenes than not, but there are just scenes that don't look so great, and um, HDR is a little inconsistent in this one. But regardless of that, this is a really good movie, and I, I, I love it. I really recommend it. It's, it's a great, crazy movie. Next is The Matrix. Um, this one looks pretty good on 4K as well. It's not not the best. Um, but yeah, I mean, as probably most of these, they look the best they ever have, right? Um, I don't know. This one just is fine to me. This one does have a Dolby Atmos soundtrack though, and it is quite excellent. So I will say that. Um, I like the Matrix though. Next is, these are all, um, these are all quite good transfers. Um, Silence of the Lambs. This is also Kino Lorber. And I don't know if, uh, Criterion has their own 4K version of this, or if they just have a Blu-ray version, but um, maybe they do. But regardless, this is the Kino Lorber version. And this one does have an issue in the beginning of the film where it has some color timing issues, if you've heard of this disc or you own this. And I will say it does. It's something that's actually quite noticeable. Uh, the first, I think they said it's the first reel, but it's like the first 20 minutes of the film um, where thankfully nothing terribly important happens. The colors are just fucked up. They like the 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 skin tones are like bright white, blinding. Um, the the there's like a pastel look to it. it I don't know. It just looks weird, and, and it's fixed. That one has great picture pretty much throughout. Uh, it's not a like a bl mind blowing 4K disc, but it looks great. Um, <clears throat> I think this one does not have Dolby Atmos. Maybe it just has a. Um, no, it has a DTS soundtrack. Not a DTS-X, but a DTS soundtrack, which I, I weirdly find sound better sometimes than Dolby tracks, but maybe that's just me. Uh, next is the Karate Kid trilogy. Honestly, these all look pretty great. Um, I, I actually think the second and third film look slightly better than the first. <clears throat> the first movie in this trilogy, these are the cases. They're kind of... They're kind of annoying, actually, if I'm being quite honest with you. I mean, yeah, this is a cool collector's box, but then you take this out of the box, and it's like a Jerry Seinfeld skit or something. But anyways, this is a really nice collection. There's a lot of good special features and everything. Um, there's really good Dolby Atmos tracks for all of these, which is great. I just find the first one looks good, okay. The second two look a lot better. Um, I, I think I like the... I don't know. It's hard to say. I think the first two are great. I think the third one is, like, fucking nuts. It just is wacky. As a lot of people said, they feel like the third movie should have been the second movie, kind of. And I, I have to agree with that. The third movie is a lame-ass way to close out the series, but... Eh, oh well. Uh, next is Parasite. Parasite looks fucking amazing. Um, this is a great film, and, in fact, I, I liked it the first time I watched it. 
Um, but I gave it like four stars, I guess. Every time I watch this, it gets better. You know, like I just, I more clicks about this movie with me. So this is one I love now. The picture in here is outstanding. It's flawless. This was a digital film. I believe this was shot at 6K. So a lot to work with there. This just looks fantastic. It's digital. There's, as far as I know, no film grain. I don't think they like added any in or anything. It's just a crystal clear, beautiful picture with a great Dolby Atmos soundtrack. Uh, right? Yeah. Yes, Dolby Atmos. So this this is just... And the movie's great. It's a, this looks great. The next two... Um, this one is a beautiful, beautiful 4K. Um, and I just watched this a few days ago, Virgin Suicides. This is the Criterion's 4K version. This looks amazing. Um, not only does this have here a buzzword incoming, the filmic look to it, which it certainly does, but it is very clear. I mean, it's not always consistently clear and that's you know probably as good as they could do i would say because everything else there's just scenes there's a few scenes in this that are like mind-blowingly clear for film like this with a, a very heavy grain structure too this movie's has pretty prominent grain it's not like super heavy um but it's pretty prominent and it looks nice um but yeah there are some scenes that are just so beautiful in this and hdr is amazing in the colors this has a dts soundtrack and again this is one where I, I just it felt like the audio was just amazing in this. And I don't, this movie has great music and everything, but I don't think Divergent Suicides as a, as a, a good soundtrack um, in terms of the audio, right? And this is fantastic. Every little um, sound effect I could hear so clearly. Uh, the surrounds, the way they were used for sound effects was really cool. It just was a really, really good one. Um, and this is the best 4K I've ever seen, and I watched this recently, and I love this, and this is Coraline. This was done from Shout Factory, or was it Scream Factory? I don't know, Shout Factory, basically. This is this cool steelbook. Very nice steelbook. Um, I don't normally get steelbooks. I normally get the cheapest, you know, version, because I just want to watch it, but then these things come out, you know? Uh, I'm just going to show this off real quick. I don't know if I've ever demoed this on my channel get this little booklet here and it's just a gorgeous uh, copy and um this is like freakishly clear um the fact that this is i get i, I don't know if it's claymation because they're little models but certainly stop motion animation the fact that this is real and not animated or digital and that it's being shot with real cameras uh adds to that crystal clear factor you're really seeing real objects and i mean the detail is ridiculous and and it lets you see into the uh the verisimilitude of the picture by looking at like fuzz and dust on some of the characters hands during close-ups which you know shouldn't be there but that's there and it just adds this layer to the movie it's just it's so unbelievably clear it's a beautiful picture and on top of that the HDR, and it's not just that, just this is a fantastic movie. Henry Selleck, uh, right, I believe, yeah. I, no, this was Henry Selleck. Um, just, this is a great film. It's, it, the book is, I like the book, but this is fun and kind of like, it's kind of a family-friendly movie, but almost not really. And it's weird. It just has these weird, surreal, dreamy, it almost reminds me of David Lynch at times. They're just scenes that are just like, artsy and weird and i just i love it and um but the the way the hdr is used in this is some of the best i've seen i mean beautiful vibrant colors at times um not to spoil this if you've never seen it because you definitely should but there's a scene with strong like neon green lighting beautiful i mean some of the best lighting hdr i've seen ever uh, and on top of that, it has a Dolby Atmos soundtrack that is fantastic. Um, there's great sound effects in this, like cannon blasts and crowd roars and music. And it's just, it's, this is something I would show off to people, right? Like a lot of people have their reference discs. That would be mine. So anyways, that's everything I watched recently. Um, yeah, let me know if you've picked any 4Ks or Blu-rays or DVDs. I've picked some DVDs up lately. I'll do that maybe soonish but yeah let me know um i'll be back next with maybe some more blu-ray stuff or, or uh book stuff i uh, did a video where i was talking about all the books i was reading last month and i got to some of those more i want to review and i'm reading some more stuff right now so anyways peace out take care see you later